Ladies and gentlemen, from the Copper Box here in East London, we are set to go with our co-featured bout of the evening. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn's Matchroom Boxing. Sponsored by William Hill, StubHub, and JD Sports. This bout is sanctioned under the auspices of the British Boxing Board of Control. The steward in charge is Mr. Mick Collier. Introducing your three judges scoring this contest from ringside. From Fleetwood, Steve Gray. From Barhead, Scotland, Victor Lachlan. And from Birmingham, Terry O'Connor. Your timekeeper from Bromley is Bob Edgeworth. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring from Doncaster, A-star referee, Howard Foster. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the vacant British Super Welterweight Championship. Introducing first, fighting into the red corner, standing with his head trainer, Craig Piner. He wears the blue and black. This switch hitter weighed in at 10 stone, 13 pounds, and four ounces. His professional record, 14 victories against only one defeat. He has six wins coming by way of knockout. He's the reigning Southern Area Super Welterweight Champion, fighting out of Reading. Introducing Asinia Digo Byfield. Byfield. his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He stands with his head trainer, Tony Sims. He wears it, the white with the blue trim. He scaled at a ready 10 stone, 13 pounds, 8 ounces. This three-time junior ABA champ, two-time GB champ, an NACYP champ now has a perfect professional record consisting of 14 fights. 14 victories, nine of them coming my way of knockout. He's the undefeated English at WBA International Super Welterweight Champion, fighting out of Bermondsey, Southeast London. Introducing the big cheese, Ted Cheeseman. Well, to you both in the dressing room, we both now expect keep it clean, break straight away when told. Both of you watch your heads in close. Good luck to you both. Touch gloves. Good luck, lad. Well, it's been a long and winding road to this British Super Welterweight title fight. All sorts of good fights were in the offing, but I'm glad we've ended up with this one. I've been looking forward to it for weeks. The build up has been very entertaining. A senior byfield is not the kind of man you meet every day. He didn't turn up to the press conference when the fight was announced, no reason for it. He just decided not to show. He brought his own music to the workout on Wednesday, engaged with Cheeseman, took the microphone off the mid-ring and started taunting his rival. More of the same at the press conference on Thursday. At the weigh-in yesterday, he was late, he had some things to do in the morning and couldn't quite make it on time. He missed the weight, but then came back and took a little bit off and made it comfortably. In the end, he feels that Cheeseman won't have enough for him. The Cheeseman has never been up against someone like him. He was as mentally strong as him. Cheeseman just doesn't understand why Byfield thinks that he can beat him. There's no way that he's taking Byfield lightly, but I think he's found him bewildering at times. You know, I think Byfield's got an awkward style. He totally believes in himself. He's mentally strong. He's awkward. He switches. I think Cheeseman has got to be. Go about the job properly here, but I do think that the the more quality work is with Cheeseman. He's got the the better proven ability. Just tucking up nicely, good defences. Doesn't waste his punches, and uh, it's important here that he keeps doing that. Stays nice and economical. You know, drives the right hand down the middle when Byfield does turn southpaw, and then when he goes back towards the dogs, get back on the jab. Cheeseman with that win against Carson Jones back in February. That was a big, big win for him. Picked up the WBA. International defended against Paulie Upton. Byfield's biggest win came in this very ring last July when he took down Sam McNess, and he feels this is a very similar situation. McNess was the promoter's fighter, the supportive fighter, the fighter who was supposed to win. But Byfield took him down, and he sees this as being the mirror image of that. Cheeseman says that that is not the case because he is that much stronger 
that much better than anybody Byfield has faced before. And it's been an interesting, quite cagey opening round so far. Yeah, but you can see the pattern here. You've got the lateral movement, the switch hitting from Byfield, trying to outmaneuver, out flick, and just out point. Cheeseman, Cheeseman, hands up, nice and high, walking forward, walking Byfield down. Take what you get. You get the body shot, sink it in. And, uh, and, it, and it's, a, it's a chopping down process for uh, Ted Cheeseman. Like I say, take what you get and just keep walking forward, hands nice and high, and he's looking to walk Byfield down. Trying to lead with the uppercut at times there, Byfield, left hand on the inside. Cheeseman sneaking the right through the guard, trying to chop down with the right Byfield. Just took the feet back and avoided it. Close round, good body shot there from Cheeseman. And that's what he's going to do every, t every time he gets a chance here, because lots of movement, lots of lateral movement from Byfield. So any time Cheeseman does get close enough to land, he's got to sink it into the body. Pretty tight opening around, Matt. Yeah, I've just thought that Byfield shaded it on work rate. Right? But Cheeseman did land some really good body work. Hill's only had the one fight since that win against McNess. That came against Gabor Gorbic, who we know all about, and stopped him in the fifth. That was a year ago. He hasn't boxed in. He thought he would be facing James Metcalf in the final eliminator, then thought he'd be in with Liam Williams for the actual title. They both pulled out, so he's ended up with Cheeseman. He's been happy to wait, happy to tick over, bide his time. Full-time fighter, good sponsors, so he's been working. Both are nice and busy here, good lateral movement, flicking both hands out, just out for jab, switches off ducks as well. And then Cheeseman trying to walk him down, apply pressure, trying to sink the body shots in whenever he gets a chance. Good body shot there from Cheeseman, getting close here in this round, landing some good straight right hands into the body. It's a, it's a chopping down the tree process. Sorry, chopping down the tree job for Cheeseman. It's a grinding down process, and he's getting close already here in the second round. Good body shot again from Cheeseman. Barfield, though, sinking some good shots into the body himself. Just got clipped by a right hand there, Barfield, as he was dipping away to his right and looking to use that same hand up top himself. Yep, both guys landing good body shots here. I thought that Cheeseman probably landed the, the better ones. Good body shot again from Cheeseman. Trying to drop those elbows on these by Phil. Just caught a right hand there, though. I like the way Cheeseman gets his hands straight back up, high up above his ears. As soon as he finishes punching, he gets his hands right back up there. Good defensive work from Cheeseman. Good straight right hand from him. He's just beginning to bully Byfield a bit in there, just to walk him down and have his way with him slightly. Nothing too major, Byfield's not looked hurt at the moment, but just the body language in there, that was a very good example of it. Yeah. Byfield almost walking away as Cheeseman just pummeled him. No, he just looks the boss in there, doesn't he? He's getting closer now, it's only the second round and he's getting on top of Byfield. Byfield fighting back and landing some good work of his own, but this is the kind of fight, this is Cheeseman's type of fight, this is where he wants it. Good body shots going in from him. Right hand, decent right hand there from Cheeseman, just arced over the top. Yep, lovely left up to the body and a short right uppercut then up the middle. This is where he wants to fight. It's very difficult for Byfield to keep him off at the moment. He's trying to use that upper body movement, but Cheeseman's getting close enough and he's working the body, as you say. Good uppercut there from Cheeseman as well. Yeah, Cheeseman in the driver's seat, turning it into his type of fight. This is the distance he wants it. He's been more economical as well. He's not wasting punches. Yeah, good work from that. Cheeseman in that round. Short punches. Don't wind them up. Don't load them up. Just keep them nice and short, nice and compact. And staying defensively really good as well. Hands nice and high. Good head movement as well. Let's his hands go and then dips, lets the, the counters come over him. It was a good round from Cheeseman. Byfield has got to dig in and get through this. They're so confident in his team. They have been all week talking to fighter, talking to trainer, everybody around him, but they must have known that this would be hard in the early stages. They must have suspected that that would be what 
this would be like. And that second round was. He's mentally strong by Phil. Nobody could ever claim that he wasn't. You see Trayvon written on the front of his trunks there. That was the name of his eight-month-old son who passed away before his fight against Arthur Herman, just weeks before it. That was his only career to fight defeat to date. So to come through something like that, and also some problems he had as a younger man, he wants this, there's no doubt about it. Yeah, this is good work from Cheeseman, though. His hands nice and high, he's walking forward, he's applying an awful lot of pressure, and he's showing good movement. He's making Byfield miss his presence, and his pressure is making Byfield throw, but he's slipping under the shot, and then he's coming back with some short little hooks to the body. And these will catch up on Byfield, they'll take their effect in the second as the fight goes on. Cheeseman just dipping in with that front foot, inching forward. He's exuding confidence at the moment. Byfield just clicking out that lead hand, that southpaw jab hand. He does switch, he's boxed mostly southpaw so far. That didn't catch him absolutely clean, but it's still moved by Field, who is just trying to work all angles of the clock face there and keep Cheeseman turning, which is what he needs to do. But when he does turn off him, he's got the throw. Yeah, it's good pressure from Cheeseman. Good body shots going in there from him. You know, and he's forcing the pace and... It... He's under pressure here by Phil, it's not a pace that he wants it at, this is Cheeseman really keeping the pressure on him. You know, and he's missing with shots here by Phil, and he's blocking them, he's making him miss, this is good work from Cheeseman as he's walking by Phil down. Again, sinks a lovely straight right hand into the body and a good left up to the body there, these body shots are going to pay dividends later on in the fight, just putting them in the bank. Field just grabbing hold of Cheeseman who lets him go on the ropes right above us. Cheeseman with a lot of support inside the arena. Good body shot again from Cheeseman. Really working, Byfield over. And again, keeps stabbing that straight right hand into the solar plexus. That'll take the legs away from Byfield. Cutting the ring off well here, Cheeseman. Making him miss, good head movement. And just flicking with that jab by Phil, just fencing with it. He's not really able to keep Cheeseman off, and there again, he, he took a couple of jabs on the gloves, Cheeseman, and then just exploded out of the shell with a left hand. Well, there's Anthony Fowler, a very interested observer at ringside. There have been shots fired on Twitter between Fowler and... Cheeseman. Cheeseman told me during the week that he didn't really mean anything by it when he sent a message in Fowler's direction or got involved in the discussion, but Fowler seemed to take umbrage to it, so were he to get the win tonight, Ted Cheeseman, then that fight against Fowler would be an easy one to make. It's one that they definitely both want, but we're only into the fourth round here of a 12-round fight. Interesting to hear the Byfield corners say between rounds there, Matt, that they've got their man and they were happy to tell him 2-1 down. Yeah, I think that's probably right. I thought he maybe edged the first one on work rate, but the last two, he's been Cheeseman, have been walking him down, he's been sinking him into the body. He's been, he's been all over him, really like a rash, and the last two rounds, he's really walking him down, as they say, and he's uh, good body shots, really good body work, applying a lot of pressure, really keeping the heat on Byfield. I mean, it's a hell of a pace. Byfield started this round a little bit more aggressively in the first 15 or 20 seconds, but again now Cheeseman just looking to try and barrel him back towards the ropes. Yeah, another good body shot going in from Cheeseman. Good head movement, slipping and sliding, blocking. Lovely body shot again. These are hard body shots going in from Cheeseman. And I like the way he touches, doesn't waste energy, picks his shots. Byfield just tucking up, then comes back with a right to the body, looking for the right uppercut. Cheeseman are happy just to, to lean on, as you say, just keeps those hands busy, distracting Byfield, and then will put maximum power into maybe the seventh, eighth punch at times. Yeah, just switch it up, don't get predictable. Keep him busy, keep, him, keep his hands guessing for defences where the shot's going to come, and then he's trying to pry open a gap, and then every now and then really drives the left hook into the body. He's comfortable there, Cheeseman. That's where he wants to be. Again, just tucking up, leaning forward. And then looking for that hook, looking for that left to the body every time. And Byfield trying to keep that defence intact as best he can. Tries to dig to the body with his right. 
And you could throw a blanket over the two of them in a minute right by that blue corner. But I think Bailey moved for the last minute. I think Byfield is sitting on the ropes because he's his legs are feeling the pace, he's done an awful lot of movement in the last three rounds, he's covered a lot of ground and I think he's trying to line the ropes here to give his legs a rest, but this is where he doesn't want to be because Cheeseman is working him over really, touching him up, left hook, right up a cut, body shots going in. Byfield trying to chop down with that right hand, Cheeseman with a good right uppercut, that got through and you could see a reaction to that from Byfield. Well, I think Byfield realised he couldn't keep that pace up, couldn't keep that amount of movement up. He was covering an awful lot of ground, and I don't think he, he knew that he couldn't keep it going for 12 rounds. But this is where he doesn't want to be Cheeseman really working him over. He finally gets off the ropes, an uppercut landed from Cheeseman before that, but he's straight back towards him again. And this has been a tough second, third and fourth for Byfield, but he's still in there, he's still hanging in there. He's still thrown back at times as he gets back to the corner. There's a a swelling over that right eye, just under the eyebrow, above the eyelid, and maybe that could slip down and cause a, a problem as the fight goes on. Yeah, great body work again from Cheeseman at the upper good two, he was throwing the left hook, right up a good combination, really driving through the middle, then he was just kind of teasing him, leaving his head there, leaving it in the bucket, inviting Byfield to come back with something, trying to open him up, but... And he was landing a few little counters on the inside by field. Good body shot going in there himself. And he was doing some decent stuff off the ropes. But Cheeseman was certainly having the best of the action. And I think Michael realised he couldn't keep that kind of pace, that level of movement going for the 12 rounds. So he, he, he tried to sit on the ropes and fight back. But Cheeseman certainly having the, the best of the action. Well, that's a scene at the Copper Box Arena. Really good arena for boxing. Vacant British super welterweight title on the line here. Both of these two challengers, Ted Cheeseman in the white, the senior Byfield in the blue and black. And it's Cheeseman in the driving seat, but Byfield is not the man that you can write off. He is ca capable of riding out the storm here, I would say. But the problem is, is that he's losing rounds. And this isn't necessarily taking that much out of Cheeseman at the minute because He's the one setting this high tempo, so presumably he feels comfortable with it. Yeah, he's setting the pace and, and he's being economical with his, his punch out, but he's not wasting any punches. He's, he's not loading up, he's not putting too much into it. He's, he mixes it up nicely between little pitter patter shots, trying to find the opening, and then every now and then, yeah, he'll load up and he'll drive the shot into the body, but he's, he's pretty good at conserving his energy. Byfield's got to be careful not to get walked down. He's got to be careful of the amount of movement he's putting on his legs. But at the same time, he doesn't necessarily want to be stuck lying on the ropes, sitting on the ropes, getting worked over, giving Cheeseman just being a sitting dock, a sitting target. But if he could just edge round the centre of the ring, take little half steps, keep 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 uh, Cheeseman turning, don't stand in front of him, stay in the centre of the ring, don't get back up onto the ropes. That, that's where he'd be better off, that's where he'd be safer. A little bit of blood, I think, maybe, coming from the... Nose of Cheeseman just got a quick glimpse as he turned and faced us. Goes with a straight right to the body there, Cheeseman. Byfield half turns his back there as he finds an exit straight right hand down. Cheeseman follows up and down goes Byfield, shakes out his gloves, rolls his neck, but he was caught there, stung by a straight right towards the blue corner. And then as he tried to spin away an exit, Cheeseman just pivoted, caught him with another right hand. Just over a minute in round five remaining, he didn't look particularly hurt there. But this is still a decent distance out from the bell. And what will Cheeseman do? Will he really go after him? No, will he be happy with the 10-8? I think he's OK here, uh, by, but I don't think he's hurt, but I think he's feeling the pace. I think it's more the pace that's getting to him rather than he was hurt by a single shot. These body shots are going to take the toll now, too. And Byfield almost swinging himself off his feet there. He said during the week that he's never been down. Amateur, pro, street fight, anything. No one's ever seen the soles of his boots. Good body shot again. Blocked out from Cheeseman, and Byfield just managed to avoid a right hand. It's the pressure, Randy, it's the pace, it's the volume. That's not the one-punch power from Cheeseman, but it's the pressure, it's the body shots. And Byfield just up. cannot keep him off. Clubbing left hook there from Cheeseman. Ten seconds yep, these body left shots in the are good. good work here from Cheeseman. It's the pressure, Randy, it's the pace of the fight. It's not the one-punch power, but it's the consistency. 
Well, big round there for Ted Cheeseman. Smile on the face briefly of a senior byfield as he heads back towards the corner. This fight is slipping away from him at the moment. Rather, it's been taken away from him by Ted Cheeseman. That was the right that started it all off. Yeah, beautiful straight right hand. That buzzed him, knocked him off balance, certainly. He, he felt that one, I think he trembled down. He felt that one shake him in his boots, but then it was the... Uh, you know, big, big round for Cheeseman, 10-8 round, lovely there, we see the, from a different angle. But I don't think it's the one-punch power of Cheeseman that's bothering both of I think he's, he's okay with the one-punch power, it's, it's the consist, the persistence, it's the, the pace of the fight, it's the non-stop, it's the body work, he's going up and down, it's the constant pressure. He's got a lang clean now, He's enjoying this, Cheeseman. He loves it under the lights. He was telling me during the week that people sometimes talk about sparring and claim to have done well against him in sparring, but he'll happily admit he's not a good sparer. He doesn't really care about sparring. He uses it for fitness. He'll work on certain things, but... It's all about performing on the night, and that's when he feels that he's absolutely at his best, and he's done the business in here so far. Sixth round, so we're nearing the halfway stage. Both of these two have done 10 rounds, neither one has done 12 up until this point. Cheeseman with an overhand right there, almost landing. He's boxing really well here, Cheeseman. I love the way he keeps his hands nice and high, and he... he... He glides into distance, covers the distance quickly with his feet. Doesn't give nothing away, stays nice and tight defensive. Love the right hand there, slip that side the jab. Good body work, really good work here from Cheeseman as he's starting to break down by field. Lovely up good there up the middle. I feel still difficult to pin down. He knew he would be, which is why I think he's gone to the body right from the start of the fight. There's some blood coming from somewhere, maybe just a, a graze, I think. Oh. Right about that left eyebrow of Cheeseman. I like the way Cheeseman's patient, though. You know, he's not getting excited, even though he's getting through and he's having success. He's not getting too gung ho. He still takes time. He still picks his punches. Doesn't waste them. And they're just working those hands, just keeping them on the move, and then looking to set up something a little bit more solid. Then back into that shell, looking to chop down. Byfield dipping to his left, finding a couple of good body shots there. Then the left hand snuck around the back of the guard. The first bit of meaningful success, possibly, for Byfield there, but Cheeseman just shrugs it off. Yeah, good work and a real good body shot from Cheeseman. Byfield did come back with shots there, but how many of them landed really? Did they land with much effect? Not that well. I think Cheeseman lets his shots go and then he sits under, lets the shots roll over the top of him. But good shots there from Byfield, though. Byfield throws a straight left hand and tries to go for a little bit Ooh, of a good body shot. Took too long about it. Yeah, these are good body shots from Cheeseman. Byfield flicking the hands out, staying. Up. Good movement from him, but it's a fair old pace. I think he's feeling it. Cheeseman, a lot of these shots going over his shoulder, good head movement from him. He's either blocking them or moving out the way of them. Oh, big shots, lovely work. Great combination there, the right hand just snuck him round the back of the glove, then he went straight up the middle with the uppercut, really good variety, yep. good Tassi accuracy. Work. And at the minute, there's not really too much the Byfield can do about this, other than just hang in. Let's go ringside, Andy Scott's with Anthony Fowler. Anthony, you've had a little bit of a uh, dispute with Ted on Twitter. What have you made of his performance so far? Yeah, he's doing the right thing. He's closing the ring now and he's applying good pressure. Byfield's got not zero power, so he's doing what he wants in there. He's comfortable. A potential future opponent of yours, uh, Ted, if he wins. Have you seen weaknesses there? Yeah, he gets it loads, mate. He's leaning in. He's very square. Loads of weakness, mate, and um, against me, like exploit them. Do you think he'll force a stoppage? So I think tonight you should get him a uh, eight or nine because Byfield's got no power to keep him off, so he's doing what he wants in there. Thanks very much. No I don't think there's a fighter that's been born that Anthony Fowler could find weaknesses in. I think he could you recommend King Kong and he'd still find things that he could he could exploit and then he'd, and he'd beat him. Well, I think you'd have to be hypercritical to uh, find faults in Cheeseman's performance tonight. He's boxing absolutely brilliant. He's breaking. Byfield down, he's staying nice and tight, compact. 
every time he finishes punching, he gets his hand back up or he rolls and slips under the shots. He's, he's walking. Michael Dan is playing a hell of a lot of pressure. He landed a lovely combination there at the time, and I've got him winning everything by the first round. He's at 10-8 in there as well in round five, so it's a healthy margin on your scorecard. And Byfield just trying to throw a little bit more at the start of the seventh. We're into the second half of this. Ted Cheeseman is in control of it for us in the white shorts. A senior Byfield in the blue and black. These are both challengers. It's a vacant British super welterweight title and there's been a lot of verbals a lot of talk in the build-up to this fight it's been interesting it's been entertaining but at the minute there's only one of them backing those words up and that is cheeseman yeah he's just persistent relentless pressure here but smart pressure he's, he's not wasting punches he's tick tapping and then when he gets the opening then he cranks up the power really drives it in but he's not wasting energy he's not putting loads into every shot he's walking him down Taking what he gets, keeps stabbing the body. Good right hand there from Byfield. That was a nice solid shot. Just disturbed Cheeseman as he was trying to make his way in. But then again, this the rat a tat tat of the gloves, followed by a solid left to the body. Yeah, nice little uppercut from Byfield there on the inside. Every now and then comes back with some nice little counters, but the pressure from Cheeseman is relentless and he's really working well. We found a home for that right uppercut. Really like the defences of Cheeseman. I like the way he gets his hands back up when he's finished punching. Either that or he, he dips and lets the shots roll over him. To try and rip to the body with that left hand, Cheeseman didn't quite have enough room for the right hook. Byfield's trying to work as much as he can, he has done from the start, trying to land punches, trying to make any kind of a dent in Cheeseman, get some kind of respect from him, try and stop him in his tracks, but he's just never been able to do it. No, he's feeling the pace here, Byfield, at some point you think he's just going to hit the wall. Blood from the nose there at Cheeseman, so he certainly has landed something, a senior Byfield, a fair bit of blood too. Yeah, coming back with some good shots here, landed a good left up on the inside, a lovely one. So the piece is better from Byfield. Nice well, this is there. decent from Byfield. Blood coming from his nose also, but he dug his toes in there and landed some solid shots. And Cheeseman just jumping into a left to the body. But this is the best spell of the fight so far for a senior Byfield. This last minute or so, I don't yeah. know if it's quite enough to take this round. No, good shot from him here, but I think he realises he has to dig in. He has to come back with something because Cheeseman, the last few rounds, has just been walking on top of him, getting through with everything, really working him over. He looks very fatigued here, Byfield. Well, that goes the bell, but that was encouraging for Byfield, certainly. And one of the aspects of the fight so far has been Cheeseman's bodywork. Man, he's looked to chop down the tree, as you termed it, right from the very start, which when you're in with a mover, is always a good plan. Yeah, from the very first round, he was sinking him into the body, straight right hands to the body, left hooks to the body. He was landing lovely right up against two. He's economical, Cheeseman. He doesn't waste punches, doesn't waste energy. You see it, his hands nice and high. When he finishes punching, he gets his hands back up, or he takes a little roll of the head, lets the shots go over the top of him. There were encouraging signs for Senior Byfield in that last round. It was his best round of the fight so far since that first round. He threw more, he landed more, and he's just got to try and build on that. There's blood coming from his nose too, so. There's some damage there for him also. Yeah, I think at some point, Byfield just has to accept that he's losing all the rounds. He's not going to win this some points. He's got to stand his ground and stand and, and, and fight. Stand and fight, stand and travel. I think he got hurt with a shot here. Right hand for Cheeseman, followed by the left. The left didn't quite catch Byfield clean, but he is opening up more here at Senior Byfield. Man, I think you're absolutely right. That must be what the corner is saying to him. And in doing so, he is running a risk, but it's what he has to take now. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you're not outboxing him, you're getting walked down, you're losing the round, you're getting worked over, you, he's sinking him into the body, you're getting a lot more tired than he is. It's time to stand your ground and fight here, because you're not with outboxing him and moving isn't working. Change tactics, stand your ground, and you've got to fight back, you've got to get these guys respect, you've got to hurt him. Uppercut landed from Cheeseman, and a right hook also. I feels backwards to us, he just seemed to list a little bit to his right, but that's kind of the way 
he moves around the ring, so I don't think he was necessarily hurt there, but another body shot. But it's a good body shot there from Cheeseman. But it's the pressure, it's the consistent, relentless pressure at Cheeseman. Those uppercuts on the inside as well. Lovely double left hook there, head of body from Cheeseman. Just got that glove up there by Phil to deaden the impact slightly of that right hand from Cheeseman. But again, he's just backed up towards that blue corner. Cheeseman just taking that little bit of distance that he needs to get his arms free and work. Trying to time that bob and weave from Byfield. And then Byfield sets his feet and throws a couple back, but Cheeseman responds to it straight away. Yeah, this is better from Byfield. He's showing some defiance here, some good spirit, and he's fighting back for Cheeseman, comes back with three jabs, knocking the head back. Looks very tired here, Byfield. Nailed with the right hand from Cheeseman. This Big heavy shot there from yeah. Cheeseman, looking for the uppercut again, and he found it. Byfield switches southport, looks to try and dig in with the left hand, but he's being pulled back towards the corner once more. Big swinging overhand right from Cheeseman, doesn't land, and then he just goes back to a little bit of tippy-tappy. Good right hand there from Byfield off the ropes. Yep, yeah, good right hook from Byfield. And again, and like, chops a nice straight right hand down. This is what he needs to do, he needs to fight fire with fire. Good left hand there from Byfield, in bursts he's doing some good work. But he hasn't really looked like he's hurt Cheeseman at any point here, and the engine is still strong here for Ted Cheeseman. At the end of the round, Byfield is he's digging in, he's doing everything he can, he's showing a lot of spirit, a lot of pop yeah, But the minute right it's just there. not enough. Big right hand there, Andy got nailed. We're back on a road. Lot of spirit here from Byfield, digging in, starting to stand his ground and fight back, fight fire with fire, and that's what he needs to do. He's trying to outbox Cheeseman, and all he's done is he's on pressure. Cheeseman's walked him down, he landing shots, he's having to work him down, chopping the tree, Dan has to say. And uh, you know, now it's that point where Byfield's fatigued when he's trying to box at range, he's just getting caught at the end of the punches. He's at the stage of the fight now where he has to just stand and fight. Well, they're calm in that corner. Considered advice as it always is from Tony Sims. He's a calming voice, a calming influence in that minute between rounds. In the midst of all the sound and the fury. Yeah, I mean, they've had a game plan and it's work and he's stuck to it. He's been consistent, he's persevered with it, he's been relentless with the pressure, he's kept the hands nice and tight. He's never really given Byfield any encouragement, even when Byfield's dug down. Yeah, even when Byfield's dug down and really tried to dig in and come back with a, to turn things around. He hasn't really been able to, yeah, he's had a bit of success, but then back comes Cheeseman, he's really getting worked over here, really feeling the pace. You know, by the first round, he hasn't won anything on my card. It's been a 10-8 round as well. You start to wonder in a fight like this, you know, is the stoppage on the cards? Or should the corner start to think about maybe pulling him out? If he can't win the fight, then it doesn't really look like he can. He doesn't have that single punch power, you wouldn't say. He doesn't have the equaliser. Maybe they would start to think about it. I don't think he'd ever forgive them by a field if they did it, and that's the reason why I don't think they will. No, but sometimes it's like, you know, the Chief Second's job is to protect his fighter. Don't be brave with someone else's body, and you have to take that decision out of his hand. And if you feel your guy's on the verge of getting knocked out, then pull him out, save him for another day, show some compassion. And, you know, he looks very fatigued, he's very tired, and, you know, he's only going to get caught more cleanly. Those body work, all the body shots that Cheeseman was sinking in early on in the fight, they're really starting to take their toll now. Just moves that head, Cheeseman, until he gets in close, and then up go the earmuffs just to protect himself. Smile on the face there from Cheeseman. Byfield just trying to pop out that right hand and see if he can keep him at distance. I mean, the other thing to consider, if you're thinking about pulling your guy out, has he got the puncher's chance? Can he, if he carries one punch power, then maybe you leave him in there if he's got that equaliser, but Byfield doesn't look, hasn't looked like hurting Cheeseman at any stage of the fight. And Cheeseman looks certainly the fresher of the two. He's been economical, he's been applying the pressure, but he's been quite conservative himself. And 
You know, it does look like the stoppage could be on the cards here. Big one right going in from Cheeseman, two in a row. Byfield just sank into the rope slightly and then came back off them and threw a punch back himself. 40 seconds remaining in round nine, and Cheeseman has set that intense, educated pace. And it's been very difficult for Byfield to deal with it. He's been down once, other than that, he's not looked really hurt as such, but he's just never been able to get into the fight. No, this is clever work from Cheeseman. Take it again, economical, walking forward, waiting for the openings, not wasting anything. Good body shots going in again. It was a tight looking left to the body from Byfield as he half kind of staggers almost across the ring. You can never be totally sure with him. He might be playing games with you, but I think even for him now, he's just thinking about getting through this. It's been tough in there for him, it really has. Yeah, another big round for Cheeseman, really walking down, landing good shots there, walking forward, good head movement, and then comes back with some good shots of his own, and then again moves the head. And all that body work, all those body shots he was putting in the bank in the first part of the fight, really taking their toll now. Hey, come on, good shot. Bell goes for the start of another round, just climbing into a left hand there, Cheeseman. And as soon as the bell has gone, at the start of every single round, he's been on the front foot, he's been inching forward, he's been crowding Byfield, he's never rushed onto him, he's never been gung-ho, he's never been all over him, mauling him, but that front foot has always been close, he's always been within distance, and he's just put him under constant, relentless pressure. Yeah, and a good start from the round for Cheeseman, landing some good hooks here, left hooks and right hooks. You know, and as Bifield gets even more tired now, it's going to be easier for Cheeseman to land cleanly. He looks absolutely knackered here, Byfield. I think one thing that Byfield was hoping, part of the plan was that he would convince Cheeseman that he couldn't live with him, that Cheeseman would be overconfident. Did he go out there he and just try and put him away? Timeout called by the referee, the gun shield has come out, so that just gets rinsed off and put back in. Howard Foster okay with that. I don't think that he was really spat out. I wouldn't particularly have blamed him if he had done at this point, to be honest. Good right hand there again from Cheeseman. And we're just under two minutes remaining in round 10. This is getting a bit uncomfortable to watch now, to be honest. Absolutely shattered here he is, Byfield. Cheeseman's gonna start landing with cleaner, more accuracy now as he gets close to him. You'd imagine the last minute of this round, this is where Cheeseman will really find a target. Yeah, really working him over. Byfield just trying to turn away to his right, but as he turned, was unable to throw, and then Cheeseman just took a step to his left and shut that door. Dedication to training, Cheeseman is, is well known, he's obsessive about it, he keeps his stats in his notebook, just like Carl Frotch did for every count, so he can compare. They all work hard, all fighters work hard, we know that, but right from a very young age, Cheeseman has been extremely dedicated, and this has been all he's ever wanted to do. And I wonder whether, you mentioned it a couple of rounds ago, we've been talking about the corner, but I wonder whether Howard Foster, a very experienced referee, will look to jump in. I think he might if Cheeseman really puts one more big attack together. I think yeah. that could be enough for him. Yeah, I'm not sure, Andy. I mean, he hasn't... I don't think he's been so much trouble that the referee would stop the fight. He seems OK. It's more, I think, your corner's job to look after your guys, the chief second's job to care, you know, if, if the duty to care is the chief second's job to look after the fight, the referee. You know, it is a tight fight. He has to give everyone the benefit to stay in there as long as they can, but, uh, you know, he hasn't looked like getting knocked out, you know, the last sort of minute or so, but he just looks so fatigued and he's way behind on the card and you just think, is he going to see it through these next few rounds? I'm not so sure. Well, two remaining. Just every now and again, he looks like he's losing his shape slightly, but I think actually you're right. I think it's just more a result out of the way he fights. And... 
in truth, there hasn't really been a reason for the referee to, to get involved in this one. I make me right there. Well, two to go and signs there from the Cheeseman corner, the Sims corner, that they're looking to maybe let him off the leash a bit in the final two rounds, and that's ominous for a senior byfield because this has been fairly ferocious so far, but it's been controlled ferocity, it's been calculated, it's been honed during camp, and Byfield will have had a plan himself. Yeah, and Tony Sim was telling him, you know, let him go the first minute, because he'll have had the minute rest, so he'll probably suck it up a little bit, he'll have a little bit in him in the first minute of the round, but then after that, it leaves him, so that's when you go to work. The Byfield's plan just hasn't come to fruition, it's not been through lack of trying, it just hasn't worked for him. Well, good rushing good there, off the cut on the inside, and he really felt that one by Phil, and I think he felt it a bit more than Cheeseman really realises, because they fell into a clinch, and he's in trouble oh, here, Byfield, another massive right up the middle, and he's just trying to find that distance, Cheeseman. Byfield can really take a shot, though. You have to say that for him. Right hand from Cheeseman misses fractionally left to the body. Yeah, really dug in here, but he's absolutely knackered here, Andy. I think if, if Cheeseman can put Land the clean shot and put a flurry together, he can force the stoppage. I really think the corner should get involved now, I really do. A minute and a half remaining in the 11th round, big overhand right, there's no sign of the towel coming in there from the corner. Craig finally just looking through the ropes. He can't win this fight now. It's he hasn't been able to win this fight for two or three rounds, and he's getting cracked, and he's getting cracked solid. He's a tough guy, he's a proud guy, but as you said before, sometimes they need saving from themselves. Exactly, the last thing a brave fighter needs is a brave corner, and he needs saving himself. He's dug in, he's shown courage beyond the call of duty. He's knackered here, and he's going to get knocked Big out. right hand again there from Cheeseman, just knocks him back into the ropes, heading into the final minutes of round 11, and Cheeseman is responding to what the corner told him, and just looking to really set about his man here. The features of Byfield are just reddening up, swelling up. On the ropes, he's trying to give something back, but he's just got nothing left. Yeah, I think the corner should pull him out here, you know, he's probably... He's doing well to stay in there, he's showing lots of bottle here, but Brave Fires need to be safe from the south. He doesn't carry the power, he can't win the final points. Why are you leaving your man in there just to get taken all these big shots in a grueling fight and that's been fought at a great pace? You know, he ends up getting knocked out and it's, it's unnecessary. He can't win the fight. The towels should be coming in here and they should be pulling their guy out. And Cheeseman almost looked towards the Byfield corner himself there a few seconds ago. A bit of blood coming out of the mouth there of Byfield, bent over, just throwing that left hand, setting his feet, opening wide, and connects a couple of times there, but it's not going to be enough. Cheeseman just riding that left hand, the blood coming from the nose. Good spell here for Byfield. Right, just snuck around the back of the guy. Yeah, no, right, right, lovely right hand, right up a good there from Cheeseman. You know, he did come back in the last few seconds, Byfield, but he got absolutely beaten up in that round. Cheeseman absolutely worked him over, and, and, it, and it was uncomfortable to see because he looks knackered, Byfield. He's shot courage beyond the call of duty. He's dug in and dug in. He hasn't won a round by the first round of my card. He's had the knockdown as well. He doesn't have the power to take Cheeseman out of there, and I just don't see why they're sending him out for this last round, unless they want to see him get a moral victory of going the distance. But when you weigh that up against the risk of him getting knocked out badly when he's that tired, I just think it's stupid. For this 12th and final round, a touch of gloves between the two, a wink and a smile from Cheeseman. He certainly has respect for Byfield, he will do when the end of this fight comes, and he'll be looking to try and close the show in this 12th and final round and the Byfield corner, I didn't catch all of it, but they're encouraging their man obviously to go out there and put on the round of his life and somehow turn this around. Right hand there from Byfield, I think Hurt Cheeseman, who's looking to tuck up a little bit there.
smile from Cheeseman, but I think that did happen to Fab, but back he comes. Yeah, I'm not sure Andy if he's home and I mean he's dug in fair play to him for showing so much battle, so much heart. But in a fight where he can't win on the cards, he hasn't looked like he's got the power to take Cheeseman out any stage in the fight. He's very, very fatigued, and you just worry that he ends up getting knocked out badly in a fight when what was the point? There was no need. It's not like it was a fight where it was, you know, five rounds apiece, you know. But, you know, this is entertaining stuff from a fan's point of view. This is great. Well, here's the bravery of Byfield there, just setting his feet and swinging. But Cheeseman again just backs him up and looks to let his hands go. Well, this is what the British title means. This is what a rivalry means. This is what boxing is. It's about pride. You have to take your hat off here to Byfield, really digging in, showing courage, like I say, beyond the call of duty, fighting back, and he's absolutely knackered. He's been shattered for the last few rounds, and Cheeseman, it's been a brilliant performance. He's really grounding, really, really worked him over, chopped the tree down, grinding him down, sack body shots in. Good right hand on the inside there from Byfield, heading up towards the final minutes. Cheeseman just keeping that upper body moving, tucking up again. And good work right there. Great effort from Byfield in the final round. I'm not really sure where this has come from, to be honest. He looks in terrible trouble in that 11th at times. Just hard, Andy. It's just hard. Nothing more. He's tired. He's gone well past the red. You know, he's just really, you know, he's into the red probably from round eight. But now this is just pure courage, pure heart and desire. And both of them just trading towards the end of the fight, just as we saw with Isaac Chamberlain and Luke Watkins standing square and just letting their hands go. Cheeseman looking to try and get a little bit closer. Cupid a work from him right at the end there. Dip low, then left to the body. Went upstairs with the right hand. Overhand right from Cheeseman. Straight left hand of Byfield. Just boxing, fighting on good. memory now. This is just pure heart that's keeping Byfield standing upright. He's absolutely exhausted. Huge, huge heart from Byfield. But Cheeseman has been the top man all night long. It's been a fantastic performance from him. And everybody at ringside on their feet for the final few seconds here. This has been a tremendous effort by both of these two. Cheeseman has won this fight, and he has won it by a distance. He dictated terms, he set the tempo, he sustained the tempo. The pressure was educated, the aggression was calculated. He did everything right, but you tip your hat to Asinia Byfield, he came with a plan, he wasn't able to put it into effect, but what bravery and courage he showed there, he dug in and he got through that 12 rounds, I don't know how he did it at times, I really don't, but as you say man, that's just the pride and the heart of a fighter, he just wanted to hear that final bell and in the end I suppose I am glad that I've seen him do it, but it was difficult to watch at times. Yeah, it absolutely, hats off to Byfield, showed so much battle, pure heart that kept him in there and pride. But, you know, sometimes brave fighters have to be safe for themselves. Luckily, it ended OK, he stayed on his feet. He's, he's, he looks fine here at the final bat, thankfully. But, you know, in a fight when it's been a, a gruelling pace like that, and he's, he's starting to take a lot of shots cleanly, and he can't win the fight on points, and he doesn't hasn't looked at any stage of the fight that it has the power to take the other guy out then that's when it's a judgment call and you just think i'd rather always lean on the, the side of caution and save a young fighter for another day i just think it was you know I, I don't like to see a fighter being left in there taking punishment unnecessarily if he doesn't look like he has a chance of turning things around and for me both have never looked like he had that kind of power to hurt cheeseman to turn the fight uh, 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 away from the way, which it was go direction it was going, which was all Cheeseman. If anything, it looked that he might get knocked out, and that, and so it's a judgment call. Luckily, you know, it paid off. He, he he finished the fight on his feet and fought with a lot of heart, and he can be very proud of the the, the bottle he showed in this fight. But Cheeseman, what a performance! Absolutely, from the first bell, had a game plan, stuck to it, and just worked him over. It was a great performance from Ted Cheeseman. Very well done. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a nice round of applause out there for both of these warriors.
After 12 rounds of action here at the Copper Box, we go to the judges' score totals. They read as follows. Stephen Gray, 117-110. Terry O'Connor and Victor Laughlin both scored this bout 117 to 111. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. And the new British Super Welterweight Champion, he's still undefeated from Bermondsey, Southeast Louisiana.